I'm Donna Davis. I'm here with Richard Cole. We're so glad you are in the studio with us today. Richard is here the first Wednesday of the month, always to answer your birding questions. So please ask your yeah. questions. Make this really interactive. You love to answer people's questions, don't you? Oh, absolutely. I've been doing that for 30 years or more. Right, and, uh, right. I know you have. So you've been the resident birding expert yeah. and and have lived for this for so long. Yeah. So we really want you to be interactive. Please make comments. Let us know where it is you're watching mm-hmm. from. Let us know if you've seen anything about birds. But, yeah. you know, we've got a lot of things coming up on the show today. Lots oh, of do. stuff going on yeah. today. A lot with, of questions from people, too, yeah. about what's been going on. So tell us a little bit about some of the topics we're going to cover. Well, we're going to talk about, well, something that's been on a lot of people's mind is is how the bird's doing with a hurricane coming up through the east. Yeah. And uh, we'll be talking about that a little bit. Yeah. We're and some, s- some other problems with birds have trying to migrate. There's a lot of dangers out there for them. Yeah. And we're yeah. going to tell you what you can do and how you can help the birds. It's been a particularly difficult season. We're also going to talk a little bit about the fall slowdown, right? Yeah. There's always been this, this problem with people putting out bird seed and then all of a sudden the birds quit eating it and they think there's something wrong with the seed or they've done something wrong or the birds all died. And generally, it's two times a year that there, that kind of happens is because there's so much natural food out there. Right. Or they're in their breeding season. They just have to dissipate and spread out. So fall slowdown. Right. We're going to we'll tell you about. all about yeah. that. And... Kohl's has one of its products today we're going to highlight yeah. and has a really fun history, right? Yes, it does. It's, it's, it's one, of my, one of my favorites Yeah, and something I use mostly at my house. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're going to tell you all about yeah. that particular yeah. product. And, of course, we're going to update you on the 2025 calendar. They're in oh, yeah. now, right? Oh, they are. It's like uh, one of those movies where the guy gets the phone book. Oh, look, I'm in the book. I'm in the yeah. book. We've got the calendar. Right. And it's now beautiful. I bet you somebody here will let everybody out there know how they can get theirs. Right. We're yeah. going to tell you how you yeah. can get yours. That's coming up later in the show. But yeah. um, but we're going to show you the calendar as well, yeah. and it's fantastic. Yeah. So first, let's talk about Helene and just this was one pow- look at that look at this powerful storm. Yeah, it was it was massive and uh and destructive yes uh, and it, it these things come at a time of year often when the birds are trying to migrate south so not great timing and not great timing at all yeah. uh, the, the the bad news is yes a lot of birds don't make it because of these storms uh, the good news is most of them do yeah and they have they have ways they can get through it. And, and we're uh, going to show you a little bit of that and how they were able to adapt and let Richard share, yeah. shed some light on this. So this yeah. is fascinating. We're going to show you a map that shows how the birds migrated. This is on uh, <laughs> September 27th. I thought the birds just really knew what they were doing. You see how they're avoiding you know, that hurricane area, and they're just coming over. But, Richard, explain what we're seeing here. Well, uh, some of it is, they there might be some avoidance there, and some of it's where naturally they would go that way. But the ones coming down who would have gone right into a hurricane, the, the hurricane, this one in particular, was so big, the outward winds, counterclockwise, were taking up a wide area. So it just naturally just takes them right around the left. That's amazing, it had, isn't it? And since the, the winds are to the left, yeah. so it... In a way, and some of them, they got a nice boost to head south. Yeah. Uh, some of them had a rough ride going around, and, and some of them, like I said, didn't make it. So Did- we're going to show you. And there were some caught in the eye of the storm. Now, this yeah. is like yesterday going into yeah. today. So you can see everything's back to normal. They're all back yeah. on track, right? Yeah. And, yeah, about the eye of the hurricane, some of the, some of the uh, shorebirds and all uh, actually just rode around in the eye and went north with it. And which I thought was amazing. So we had in North Georgia and on up in Tennessee and North Carolina, they were seeing shorebirds. Wow. After. So Isn't they, that amazing? they just rode out the eye and they'll they'll get oriented again and head back south. Yeah. And we're gonna talk a little bit later about hummingbirds and how they were yeah. affected. But you know, were some of the habitats really destroyed, do you think, for yeah. these birds? But the ones that were headed south. They're going down there because this won't be a good habitat for them in the wintertime. Yeah. So they're yeah. going to where the habitat's fine. Good. They just got to get there. Yeah. And the birds that are left here, they can survive this because yeah. they're still, everything's pretty much intact except in really 
in their viewpoint, isolated areas. Mm -hmm. And uh, our neighborhood's like, oh, the neighborhood's gone. Well, not too far away, there's, everything's okay. Yeah. So that, they'll, they'll get by. And uh, these guys are very resilient. They are. They, you know, and they really yeah. have the, the yeah. ability to adapt. That is what yeah. is so important is that they can adapt. Now, you'll see yeah. me on the computer a little bit. We're, this next story we're going to talk about are okay. bird strikes. So talk about that with the fall migration. Yeah, we well, talk about um, the migration and hurricanes and all the threats there. Yeah. Well, there's other threats to birds, too, when they're not migrating necessarily. Uh, glass. Yes. Tall Constant buildings with glass is, is, yes. is really a threat. And it, it's something we don't pay a lot of attention to. But there was a, a, a recent uh, article in uh, by C on CBS News uh, talking about the uh, problems with birds hitting offices and things like that and how some people are trying to make a difference with the types of glass they put on it. It really is amazing. Is cities that, are actually passing laws yeah. right now yep. saying that, like some cities, New York City, a yep. lot of others have, yep. uh, have followed suit, which is great news for those of us who yep. love the birds. So many birds are yep. dying from all of this. Um, I'm cute. I've queued this up and we'll, we'll watch a little bit of it. Yep. But basically, um, they passed laws saying that you know, you have to change the way you're putting these the glass on the buildings. Now, this yes. owl, who is just beloved, we're seeing memorial shots for the owl. Everyone yeah. in New York loved him, and he hit uh, one of these, you know, glass buildings, yeah. saw the reflection, hit it, and you can see the memorial. Everyone missed yeah. him, but, but he's one of thousands who and, are dying from this. Yeah. yeah. And people don't see it. Uh, my first uh, taste of something like that was being in downtown Atlanta a little earlier than normal. Oh, wow. And they really? were somebody was outside the big office building picking up dead birds. Oh, my and gosh. It's like, well, that Just was a, almost a daily occurrence. And so yes. time you couldn't get to work, people wouldn't see it because during the right. night, these guys come by and hit the buildings. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Leaving, leaving the lights off at night. Yeah. That's Okay, so now yeah. you're seeing this... This this has been invented. I think it's this. Com now look at this. You can still see out yeah. just fine, but that's what the bird sees yes. when he gets close. Isn't that amazing? So they're going to this, and of course it's more expensive, but it's worth it. You don't want yeah. dead birds everywhere. That is horrible, and yeah. we need to preserve. So this is just showing. I think a few of the buildings that have gone through this conversion. But if yeah. you want to see this entire video, which yeah. I loved, I watched all this, yeah. um, look at that. It's just, that's yeah. how it looks to the bird, you know? And it was and a drastic reduction in the number of hits. Yes, so Something they could absolutely. measure, they could say, yeah, here's what, how yeah. it works. Because here's yes. the count year after year before. Right. Here's the count after drastic reduction. Right. This can be applied to homes, too. I mean, yeah. uh, homes don't make as big of a difference as some of these big buildings do in yeah. migration. But at home, you know, you get birds hitting your windows. Yeah. And a lot of times it'll kill them. Yeah, and see, Alex is showing us right now, like, yeah. uh, these are simple things you can do. Decals that just make them see that... that there's it, something there. Yes, yes, that it's not clear. They can't yeah. just go through. Yeah. So this is what we need to do at home, right, Richard? Yeah, something like that. And yeah. uh, I do a, a variety of things. There's some little... Uh, reflectors that reflect infrared light oh. or, or in a range that the birds can see. We don't right. see it that well. So they look kind of clear to us, yeah. but they look more opaque to the birds. And you put yeah. that on outside the window and they're not too obstructive to your view. Yeah. You can put a lot of little dots. You can put other things. You can put a soft screen on it, if, cool. you know. Yeah. And uh, anything to stop them hitting. I have one window that's out of a bedroom, which is generally kind of dark. And the window mm -hmm. is wide open in the door. And so it makes kind of a very nice mirror. So they, yeah. see, and I had a couple of bird hits there. So now oh. <laughs> I just put something over it yeah, so that they can't hit the window. And that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Now, while we're talking about migration and issues to yeah. do with migration, I do want to show just a look at this Hummer migration <laughs> map. And I will tell you, Richard. Kind of fascinating, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? My <laughs> gosh, they are so on the move. And I will tell you. Like, this is just amazing. I think I may have gone to the wrong thing. Yes, I did. <laughs> but see this map? It is, like, showing you all this bird migration. It is amazing. Look at that. And so many of them are on the move. Now, I've seen at my feeders huge increases with birds. I think we have a little video that we can show as oh, well. Oh, good. Yeah. But have you seen a huge pickup in the... Uh, Hummingbirds at your feeders, Richard? No. 
No. No. Why? Because you it, always see, see tons of them. It usually we get a lot of birds, and yeah. uh, the last couple of years it's been a little low. Yeah. And uh, it's probably going to change. It does oh, fluctuate my. from area to area. It depends on where the birds are going. They don't yeah. always take the exact same. They don't come down I seventy five on right. migration necessarily. Yeah. They vary, so it depends on. What's okay, happening? so we're looking at video now of a hummingbird feeder that, you know, we have outside. And yes. this is just one hummingbird, but this was in the summer. And I tried to get some video with my husband's cell phone. We got some. <laughs> and it was great, but we couldn't get it transferred to show you today. Yeah. But there are, we've never seen four at a time. Oh, good. And we are seeing that. And yeah. we want to remind you, right, like get your hummingbird nectar, right? Yes. The Cole's hummingbird yes. nectar. Look at that. That's nice shot. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. That bird's gulping. Wow. And they are. <laughs> they are gulping yeah. now. But, yeah, yeah, so get your Hummer high rise. Yeah. And, and get a couple of them because they, they don't like to be together on a feeder. They don't right. do it. Sometimes right. you see them peacefully sit down, but they tend to fight yeah. because they want to protect their own little food source. They're a little uh, funny about Territorial. that. Territorial. And uh, if you have uh, several feeders, it gives them a chance to, to work it out a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. So Kenny Faye says hi. He always enters oh, our hi call. There. Yeah. yeah. And so thank you for commenting. But he always enters the contest. He always yes. has great pictures. Yes. And we so appreciate that. We do appreciate that. And we want to talk, let's just talk about the fall slowdown now. Yeah. I, I mention this every year because I, I get calls and yeah. I get questions like, what happened to my birds? You know, Am I doing something wrong? I'm doing something wrong. Hey, I just bought this new seed or whatever. Yeah. Sometimes they, they would say, you know, I just put your new seed out, and now my bird, they don't like it. They yeah. Put, well, they, they did that this time of year. Yeah. Uh, this time of year, uh, the population has dropped down a little bit from all the babies mm -hmm. that are out there. Uh, the ones that are going to make it are, are, are doing well. Yeah. But all of a sudden, there's abundant food. Yeah. All the spiders are out. And you think, spiders? Oh, yeah, birds love to eat spiders. And uh, especially hummingbirds. They like can have too. them. I yeah. do not like having the. We have the <laughs> hugest spiders I've ever seen in our yard. That's the New Joro spider. Is it? They're 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 now taking over the South and probably the world. Are they? They're, oh, they're, they're an huge. Import. Yeah, they're yeah. huge. They look like our. Where our, they come from? Uh, I don't remember exactly where they come yeah. from. Yeah. But they're here now. Yeah. So they come from here, and uh, they're they're not aggressive. It's hard to get them to bite Thank you. Goodness. They're not really bad, but they're big and they're scary. I hate that yellow color on they them. They have really so thick looking. webs, which yes. can be problematic. I'm wondering now how much of an impact that's going to have on very small birds. And I do want to remind people, too, yeah. that Halloween fake web, stay away it, from it. It's it's bad for the birds. They can get caught in and it. And some of the small animals get yeah, wrapped up in it. They're not used to stuff like that. It's enough for them yeah. to deal with these yeah. Juro spiders and their yeah. webs. So yeah. we have a huge one. We had a huge spider in it. My husband, okay, the hurricane came through. <laughs> that didn't knock it down. No. It was still no. there. They're very tough. And then over the weekend, he pressure washed. And I said, "How?" it probably came right down, right? Yeah. No, no, it didn't. Yeah. He couldn't pressure wash it down. Yeah. And so he had to, like, get a big, you know, stick and knock it down. I now have several sticks around my house that I'm—, I'm Waging the war as these yeah. guys come up the back and get onto the porch and stuff and trying to keep them down and away from the feeders. So the birds yeah. have tons to eat. Big old spiders that I hope they just The big birds will eat those big spiders, but hummingbirds are not going to mess oh, with gosh, something that no. big. No. no. A, bird, uh, a spider that size can actually uh, get a hummingbird in its belt and it will take care of it. Oh. I've, I've seen a hummingbird uh, killed by what we would call a, a riding spider. Some people call Aww. it a common name, or garden spider. And because the hummingbird gets tangled in that web and can't yeah. get out. And the, oh, don't. And, and, the, and the, the spider will yeah. basically do the same thing to the bird it would a large insect. Yes. So it don't happen very often, but it can happen. Yes. But the Joro spiders, that may be more of a problem now. Yeah. Oh, I hate to hear yeah. that. So let's move to a happier topic. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about the... Feed the bird seed that you yeah. love so much. Kind of a story from the past in a way. It's like, you know, we have different types of bird seed we have yeah. out there in the market. And uh, one of my personal favorites is special feeder. Yeah. It's Why like, is okay. it a personal feed favorite? I don't know other than I just kind of came up with it. Yeah. And uh, I found that it worked very well in feeders. Was it your first blend? No, it was oh, not. Okay. It was about number four or so. Yeah. And... Uh, I thought about the well. The name is, is kind of funny. What does special feeder even mean? Yeah. Right? What's in a name? Yeah. Well, I wanted. I, I was putting bird seed in a small bowl feeder, like 
the coal's bountiful uh-huh. bowl. Yep. And you put it in there, and the birds come and start eating. And after they get the good stuff, there's nothing left but the stuff they don't want. <laughs> yes. And they can't get to the rest of it. So I said, well, why put that in there to start with? They're not eating it up here on, they may eat it on the ground, but they're not eating it in the yeah. in the bowl. So I just started making my own stuff without that in there. And I put everything they do like, like peanuts, sunflower meats, sunflowers in the shell, and things like that. And, oh, they loved it. And yeah. Wait a minute. There was no millet and stuff left over. Right. So I said. It's just the best. I said, this is, this is a good product. We need to put yeah. this out there. And so we developed it to where we could make it like that. And we came up with the name Special Feeder because it goes in what I called at that point the special feeders. The yeah. little special feeders that you have okay. hanging around yeah. that aren't a tube feeder. Mm-hmm. And so this is food for those special I feeders. I that. That's, and it, that's so and, neat uh, to know. And it's been one of my favorites and, yeah. and obviously a lot of other people's favorites. Yeah. It went along for a while. And it's like, well, people aren't liking this that much and not selling a lot. Well, people just hadn't seen it, gotten used to it, but it just kept getting better and better and more and more sales as people learn, like, wait a minute. This oh, we stuff buy it is all the time. really yes. good. Yeah. And they all love it, too. They do. There's absolutely no waste in that. And it's yeah. a good blend of everything they want. And it attracts a lot of birds. Yeah. So. That's fantastic. So, so now we're going to talk about the Coles calendar. And as we show you pictures of the Coles calendar, we're just going to talk a little bit about um, this calendar. It just came out. Uh, we have it on a PDF that we can show you. And there are tidbits from Richard in it. There are fantastic <laughs> pictures in it. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I love that cover. Every but, year I think it can't get better. I know, right? And then because right? of the pictures people send in, it's just amazing. I know, right? Isn't that beautiful? So you get to learn a little bit more about Coles, and you also get to see these amazing birds with every season. And we want to remind you, this is a great time to go out and, um, you know, get pictures of birds. We always need more winter pictures. Yeah. Aren't these pretty? And I yeah. love the tidbits and everything. So it's a beautiful calendar, and you can get yours. Um, the way there are some, several different ways that you can get your calendar. For one, if you do have a picture in it, you're going to get these mailed to you, and you'll get two mailed to you, right? There's a reason to send in your pictures right there. The picture makes it, you get a calendar. I know, and isn't that, I, I, if it were me, I'd be so proud of, you know, oh, I did that and everything. So we want to show you this website, too. This is a website called Kohl's One Stop Shop, and we sell the products and, and everything on this website. So if it's your first order, you can get, you'll automatically get a free calendar. Really? With that order, yeah. What a deal. Yeah, it's a great deal. So, what a great time to do that ahead of the holidays. So, that's another way you can do it. You can also go to the coleswildbird.com website. See this link? Contact us. You can fill out this form. You'll need to include your email, your full mailing address, and your name, and we will mail a calendar to you. Isn't that nice? Wow. Yeah, so lots of ways to get your hands on a Coles calendar, and those will be going out soon. But it's yeah. absolutely gorgeous. It you is. have to be totally pleased uh, with it. I'm very proud of it, and uh, yeah, uh, it's, we always like to make sure our products and things we put out are really top notch. Yeah, and, and the calendar has been a great success, and, and we're happy with it. So yeah, so yeah. just a quick reminder. Yeah, let's go back and. Watch, we have some time. So we want to remind you to go ahead, take your pictures. We love seasonal pictures. We were just looking at one taken during the summer, obviously, in the, in the fountain. We like for the pictures to depict the seasons through the eyes of the birds. And it's always great if they are enjoying some cold streets, right? That's just a big bonus. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, but it doesn't really matter if your picture is of, like, one of the traditional type birds that you yeah. see everywhere, like yeah. a cardinal or a goldfinch, um, you know, it doesn't have to be that, right? No, it does not. Um, I think uh, this year, one of the birds in there, 
is something you just don't see in Knife the Starling. Right. The Starling. That one won it's, first place. Yeah, it's Tim just, Bowser. It's, yeah. it's a nice photo, and it's a bird that we see around, and we don't think about it too much. It's actually here, for one of the reasons it's here, is because people imported it because it's a beautiful bird. Look at it's the black feathers and it's shine. on it. Yeah. yeah, and it's got it has some seasonal uh, changes in it, but it's, it's a, just a nice bird. Here, we, we say, no, it's a bad bird because yeah. it, it's an introduced species here, and uh, but it's still here, and right. it's not going anywhere. So, and there it is. Uh, and isn't that cute? You know, yeah. Tim Bowser, who took this picture, who mm-hmm. also took part in, I need to mention this. So, Coles does what's called a um, share your Coles story, and Tim mm-hmm. Bowser contacted oh us about his story, getting introduced to Coles yeah. and trying the feed and that kind of thing. Yeah. And he was actually trying to attract bluebirds that day oh. when he got the European starlings. But he <laughs> just went with it, you know, yeah. and, and look at him. He won first place. So, yeah. And then we also want to congratulate Al Sant, who had two pictures that won. Yeah. His one, second, and third. So, wow. uh, yeah, just remember to too. keep taking yeah. those pictures. Yeah. And, you know, show us just the seasons through the eyes of the birds. Yes. Anything else? We're finishing up a little bit early. We are going to show you some video of, you know, of the pictures that won that got into the calendar as yeah. well as all the semifinalists because we had yeah. so many great ones. But anything it's, else you want to bring up here? It's a good time of year to think about you cleaning out your, your bird houses, bird boxes, bird nesting boxes, and get the old stuff out of there because there could be insects in there. There could be a bee up in the top or something. And just put, I always just clean them out really good. I said, open them up, hit them with a hose, clean them out, let them dry, close them back up. Sometimes I'll put maybe just a little pine straw in the bottom so if a bird wants to get in there. And sometimes they'll go in there and roost on cold days. They don't really? live in them. They don't live in bird houses. But sometimes the bluebirds will, will hop in there four, five, six at a time. We've seen, I think, the, the count's up to like 10 or 12 somebody had in one bluebird box. They just piled in and stay warm. That's uh, so smart. They're such little survivors. They yeah. really know how to adapt yeah. and to make the best of whatever. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. Richard, until I knew the people at Coles and started working with the people at Coles, I thought that every bird nest, bird house yeah. was just a place that they had their little home together, and then they had their, you know, like us, yeah. they used it all the yeah. time, and you guys were like, no, 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 no they're just uh-uh. that. They just use that for raising the So that's the right. babies. nesting box is a, is a good term right. for it instead of a house. Did you ever think it when you were a kid? Did you ever think that, like, think when they it, built their I nest, they all lived there? it really makes, you know, you don't know. It's like, oh, yeah, they live <laughs> I think, you know, yeah, they kind of live there. It's a birdhouse. Yeah. Uh, it didn't take long to figure it out. No, they just they just use it. And sometimes they will go back, like I said, in, in the fall or in the winter and, and roost there a little bit. Yeah. But I don't see a lot of it, but it does yeah. happen. Yeah. yeah. So what a show it's been today. Yeah. Remember that if you don't have yeah. the birds at your feeder, it's because they are so busy eating the <laughs> bugs and the spiders. No big deal. Yeah. Don't have to worry about it. Get your special feeder if you've never yeah. tried it and have it out during the winter, right? Absolutely. Or have it out now. Still, some may eat it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, yeah. It's a great food. So give it, give it a shot. Yeah. yeah. And we'd love yeah. to get your comments. If you guys do have any questions, just looking on my phone to see if anybody's asked questions. Yeah. But if you have questions about birds, now is your time. Richard is the expert, and he can answer any questions that you have about birds, right? He can, he can try well, <laughs> you can yeah. try. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't have anything else, then I think I'm going to check one more time and see if we have questions. But if not, then we're going to leave you with a couple of videos. Yeah. And we always appreciate it if you share out the broadcast. That's great, too. But yeah. we'll leave you with the video of the semifinalists as nice. well as the ones that made that beautiful calendar. Okay.
Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and don't forget to share it.